for me, it's very personal, personal rewarding. And I think it's, for me, it's become a passion that I never, just never thought it would be, um, that it would never end, that it, that would never transpire. And I have, like I said yesterday, like I'm very fortunate, blessed to have a, to have that window, to have that um, um, walking along with our First Nations children, with our young people from Stony Dakota. They're just, I mean, and the giftedness they bring to our building and the giftedness that they bring to my journey as an educator. It's just, it's been amazing. Has it been difficult? Very difficult. Because they've, they've, for this year, for whatever reason, there's been a lot of trauma in their lives. And so that impacts our whole community. And it's it's been also interesting to see how they've become so much of a part of our school community that when something does impact them, it also impacts the school community. So we're like the family away from home who, who is taking care of them. And actually just, it's, I've had the opportunity today to sit at table with Joseph and just some of his insights. And we, he referred to us as the third set of parents, the third parent. And I thought, mm -hmm. and what I've appreciated, and just in terms of his wisdom, as an elder, he's, we all mentioned that um, he's kept us quite calm in our discussions. The struggle I have is reconciling, wanting to, to walk that journey with the young people at the same time, walk that school, that educational journey where you have your, your credit demands, your high school diploma demands, your PATs, your diploma, and all that kind of piece and curriculum coverage and just, and so we end up at, even in our school, even with my own colleagues, having some very heated discussions about why do we continue to accept students from Stony Dakota when, when they never come to school? We see them one day, and then we might not see them again for three weeks, and then they might come for two days. So are we, you know, are we disadvantaging them by having them in our building? And so this, Opportunity is like to see all the work that's being done in other districts and to see people with the same passion and to continue for us from St. Timothy perspective to continue to quote unquote push our agenda in terms of our in terms of our district and advocate for our students because we're in a unique position in um because most of our students do not live in our area they live like an hour plus west of us, but just the giftedness and some of the insights they have into what we're doing from their experience. I think what happened, if I remember correctly, just because um, we had an we had an increase in enrollments, and that could have been an enrollment of our First Nations children, and that could have been from eight to six. Like it just, and we realized that just in terms of where they were in terms of their education for. Um, that we needed to do something. So working with very close with our DL team, with Jacqueline Slee and then with Susie and Kathleen last year and Stephanie last year, and then myself and one of our and Ed, one of our other teachers, just seeing, okay, what can we do in terms of programming for these children? And then advocating for them and then getting some support from the district in terms of having Amber Dawn and the Bellians family liaison this year. And then Having, bringing Wanda back in, Wanda had been very much involved and then for whatever reason that had separated a bit and bringing Wanda back in, Wanda first righted to work with our children, the cultural piece. And then last year it culminated with the powwow um, celebration in June, which had an impact on all of our building. And last year we really focused with our staff in terms of educating our staff around our First Nation, our Indigenous people, and just wh where they're coming, where where they, they are coming from and what they're bringing to us. And this year it's been more, um, as we continue to work with the young people in terms of the literacy program and just well, feeding them and making the program work for them and having, what shall we say, like, we almost, we have individualized, individualized programs for a lot of our children. And then, so now we're looking at, okay, now we need a program, we, now we need a, project program and it's one of my colleagues Susie's term like we want it to be called we don't 
want it to be called like a transitions program, which is a common term in the district, but to call it education is the new Buffalo, but to have it in Stony Nakoda language. And to go, so we're really advocating for that right now in terms of our district and going from there. And have it as a wraparound team. The other thing I forgot to mention yesterday is we have um, even our mental health therapist, for example, who's contracted to the district, contracted to the district from Alberta Health Services. She worked with a num one of our First Nations family. We have two children in the building. Well, up from that particular family, right? And her um, wanting to work with our with our families, and so we're looking continuing that. And so when our family and and so it started off as that, and just. Um, when we talk to our young people, they talk about that they feel safe. They like coming to school, they feel safe. And so and now we want to like bring their parents in and we've even talked about like that we, so, okay, so we have this program for our children. Do we also offer some kind of program for our parents, particularly our mothers, so the parent brings the child and what do we do for the parents, right? In terms of being able to access. Well, just in terms of come in and meet with an adult, like, I mean, not just for our First Nations parents, but I just find that most of our parents just want someone to talk to some days. And what a wonderful opportunity if we can provide that for our First Nations children as well as our, any parent. And we're in a unique, and just in terms of Solange, what you said, we're in a unique position at St. Timothy. We're seven to 12, we're a small enough school, about 400 and just under 450 students where we can I, well, we can ask teachers to do that, like, okay, you've got some time in here, let's rearrange your schedule so you can offer a food program, or let's see, hey, you got time to take this young person into the shop, that kind of thing, and then build upon that. In terms of out, because I, well, I mean, I could probably get in trouble. Sometimes I was, circ I do, I mean, I get circumvent, and I know, because I know what Albert Ed would tell me if I, like, if I ask, well, yeah, you can do, you can do that, right? You can do that. You've got a resource in the building. How best it's right? How best you use that resource, that teacher resource in the building? And we also, I mean, we 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 laugh. And it was a term you keep, I remember last year, the credit recovery thing, right? So anytime a child is not finished, you know, he or she because of their attendance, I mean, they've done. We do D two L as our learning platform. Well, if they've done three out of fifteen assignments, we'll keep that. And we won't have them go back and do the three or the four or the five, and then we'll just continue that, right? Oh, we've got, I mean, and again, we can, because we're small enough, we can individualize. I had a young fellow who's as bright as the day is long, but never comes to school. Okay, here's a science 14 exam. Please write this. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> but in terms of assessment, right? So we have lots of conversations around assessment. Now, Mike, do, the, do we get, do I get into some discussions with teachers because, right, they're used to, right, they're, I mean, right, because they see what they're required to do, right, in terms of um, um, accountability to Albert Ed, but I'm also thinking, well, but it's not going to do this young person any good to give him or her a zero. So we visited the Leftbridge school, the schools in Leftbridge there, the um, Catholic school, the high school, and they're, um, quote unquote, what I call storefront schools. I think we realized, I realized that we, we do that, but we need the program so that someone manages, someone manages or, or, yeah, that someone manages that program. Because when these lads, mostly lads, turn up once every four weeks, like what are we supposed to do with them or once, right? Like, oh, we're scrambling. Okay, what are we gonna do with you today? The piece, the part of the piece that we need to add and certainly for our high school students, it's the whole work experience. And that becomes a transportation issue. But in the past, we've had to get off the bus, the Stony Nakota bus in town, go to work and then pick that bus up at the end of the day. So that's something we would look at for the fall, because I've got one lad, he, he tells me he'd come every day if he had a job. So to do some work our magic around that one. People who are, are um, passionate about this really makes it work. And passionate for all of our children, we talked about in one of our table discussions, like, we don't see them as, I mean, I don't see them as indigenous people, I see them all as a person, right? Every individual is a person. We were talking, Solange, just in terms of your work, in terms of like, the, um, you're sharing with us last, uh, yesterday, late yesterday afternoon, in terms of what, all the resources that are available, right? And it's how now do we, do we, 
have teachers access that and integrate it into their curriculum. And I think it's more of a struggle with senior high than at junior high because senior high teachers get so um, tied to their curriculum. Right, and so it, like, and it's like, sometimes it's like hauling the sled up, hauling the snow sled up on gravel, <laughs> up a big hill. Well, we talked about purposeful or intentional PD. Like purposeful, because like sometimes PD is not as purposeful or as intentional as it could be, but in purposeful PD, I go, this is how this fits, or this is how this fits. And one of my big, and one of my big things pushes right now is that for Alberta High School diploma, right, requirement you have to have social 30-1 or 30-2, well, you need to put Aboriginal Studies 30 in there. Like 30-1 social or, and or 30-2 social is required maybe by one post-secondary program, but it can be such a, such a, like, right, for, for young people not to be able to receive their high school diploma. So that, so the curriculum piece, I think we all, for us as a school, we need to work closer, more closely with our post-secondary institutions, the dual credit program, the work trade wins, right? And then, but have that person, yeah, I have that, we need the program. We need a program, we're always advocating for a program. <laughs> But no, so we've re we as a school community really appreciated the work in the project and to go from and that from yes, and we're okay to be right kind of really pushing it in from really pushing I'm just going pushing it on it to the district right because it's it's just part of it's part of our it's a huge part of our building. Oh, got, well, I do. I have a good team. Like, yeah, you ask and ask and you shall receive. <laughs> <laughs> and to whom much is given, much is expected.